Off the top this morning, kind of backed into a corner in, in a way here uh, because we, we do have to talk once again about uh, last week's news concerning the uh, increase in speed limits on some British Columbia highways. Uh, as a result of uh, a commentary that I aired on the subject yesterday, and uh, some of the uh, some of the uh, things that I intimated in the comment uh, have been challenged uh, by uh, uh, gentlemen with the organization Safety Through Education, not Speed Enforcement. Uh, and uh, I I did say some very uh, some very inflammatory things yesterday, and, and this was driven, of course, by the by the suggestion uh, of the transportation minister that uh, his decision to raise speed limits on some BC high would actually improve safety. And, and I think, uh, among other things, I described that as rhetorical nonsense, uh, which I, I firmly believe. I mean, it, it just does not make any sense that raising... I mean, maybe, yeah, it's okay. You can, you, you can increase the speed limits without creating undue additional hazard, but actually improve safety. No, I, I just think that's ridiculous. Uh, in any event, uh, Sense uh, did, did not want to be associated with those uh, with those remarks. So do I understand correctly, Ian Toodle? Thanks for joining us on CFAX once again, sir. Well, thanks for having us, uh, Frank. I appreciate it. Um, well, look, uh, those remarks didn't come from us. However, I have to tell you that he's actually correct, Okay. If you haven't read the speed limit review, there's gold in that review, Frank, and you really should read it. Um, I I draw your attention to anywhere from page three to seven, and you can you can read the the science and you can read the engineering. And the problem with this debate is that it's it has become kind of polarized over the years. Uh, You know, you've got the the disaffected speeders on one side, which is I think how you painted us in your editorial yesterday, and you've got. uh, you know, the uh, the purveyors of common sense, which, uh, you know, you're, you're sort of putting yourself out there to be. Um, Indeed. <laughs> so, you know, where, I mean, where do I start with this? Um, do, do, so you're telling me that you do, in fact, agree with Mr. Stone's suggestion that, uh, that raising the speed limit will improve safety? Look, the speed, the, the raising the speed limits on the highways that they have chosen to raise the speed limits on, I am willing to put it out there right now. I'm, I'm guessing, I, I believe, uh, the science tells us, history tells us, will improve safety. Because what they have done is they have moved the limits closer to the 85th percentile. By the way, these... These moves don't take the limits on the chosen highways to the 85th percentile. Most of them are uh, are chosen to a point that's at or below the 85th percentile. The 85th percentile is really where they should be, and they haven't gone that route. If you look through that report, take the Coquihalla Highway, for instance. The Coquihalla uh, sits firmly at uh, roughly 127 kilometers an hour. It was there last time they surveyed it, which was over a dozen years ago. And it's there again, and yet they've chosen a very conservative 120 that does not take it to the upper end. You, How do you, you feel about that, Frank? You, you, well, I, I, I wonder whether you accept or reject the widely held presumption that uh, that 85th percentile will simply increase, that the speed limit is increased, everybody has a propensity to drive slightly above the speed limit, and uh, all of a sudden, if 127 was the norm, it'll become 137. Well, Agree or disagree? I, I disagree. And, and again, um, the beauty of this document, which, by the way, has been put together by engineers. Th- these are people that are educated in the engineering of setting speed limits, and, um, you know, building highways. These are people with families. These are people that don't want to die on the highways. And these are people that are educated in engineering. They've put their signatures on this document, and they've drawn our attention to not only the science behind the setting of speed limits, but the, the history and the experience in other jurisdictions, and also the history in British Columbia, by the way. Uh, interesting piece here that I, I looked up after um, 
you know, I, I contacted you over this was the fact that we've done this before in BC, and we did it back in 1997. Actually, 1996, there were a number of uh, uh, different uh, highways that were chosen to raise the speed limits on about approximately 2,300 kilometers of rural highway. They raised the limits. Uh, roughly 10 kilometers an hour, and the result five years later was that serious collisions on those particular roads had decreased by 18 percent in spite of a 31 percent increase in traffic. How do you explain that? Coincidence. Well, I, I, it's, I, I, it's not. Um, there are other areas, too, where you, I can draw your attention to this. Uh, you know, there's experience in the U.S., um, you know, the uh, Federal Highway uh, Safety Bureau has, has done uh, similar studies and found in the U.S. that, you know, again, in jurisdictions where they've raised the limits to the 85th percentile, and that's the important distinction here, yeah. and I'll get to your other point in a minute, um, but to the 85th percentile, you tighten up the, the amount of variance when you do that, and you find that most people, the, the outliers will generally dial back their expectations and their behavior, and uh, some of the people that might have been uh, you know, a little bit timid about exceeding a posted speed limit might raise their speeds, but the, the majority tend to travel it closer to the 85th percentile at that point. You, you folks uh, assert specifically... Uh, speed does not kill. Speed differential does. Yes. Uh, now, if, if, if you've got people on the road, and, and I know that you're concerned that there are people on the road who drive below the posted speed limit. Uh, no, it, no, 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 Frank, that's not our concern. And listen, you, you know, two weeks ago when you and I had a, a, a conversation about left lane bandits on the, yeah. on the phone, uh, yep. did this interview... Um, I hope that I made it clear that there's no one's being forced to drive any speed on the highways. There's no problem people driving whatever speed they want to drive. If they're timid or they don't feel comfortable at, w at whatever speed for whatever reason, there's a right-hand lane for those people. But the problem in British Columbia is that the, um, you know, the speed differentials combined with improper lane discipline has created a bit of a moving chicane on the highways, and, and that's the focus there. I have no, no problem at all with people driving slow. Uh, you know, I think I said to you in jest uh, when we last talked on the telephone that, you know, as I age myself, my, my need for speed is starting to be dialed back. And I've noticed that the people that I've watched age over the years that used to be, quote, faster drivers on the road are now becoming those that some people are driving by and giving them double takes as they go by them because well, they're, they feel that they might be going too slow. In, 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 all, in all seriousness, I... I, I don't think you ought to be saying that in jest. I think that is uh, that is a very real uh, uh, phenomenon. As as we age, we get a little wiser. Right. We uh, we don't well, feel I, no, no, the no, need to confuse, to push uh, the limits. We don't don't confuse driving slower or uh, or being timid on the roads as being a little wiser. That's again not something I'm saying. I'm just saying that I, I don't equate limit. driving within the speed limit as as being timid on the road. I, Look the the. Lowest 15 percentile, the, the most danger on the roads comes from the slowest 15 percent and the fastest 15 percent. The people that are traveling between the 15th and the 85th percentile are the people that are statistically the safest on the roads. Now, you know, I know that this sounds counterintuitive, and, uh, you know, what I have to say to you, that if it was true that gravity would, you know, would force people to fall out of the sky every time and kill people, then none of us would fly every day. So, um, you know, I recognize that it seems counterintuitive, but really, if you look at the science and you look at the engineering, it's really not. And, you know, I find myself in an extremely odd position right now. For the first time in a long time, I'm actually agreeing with something that the government has done. We've been screaming from the sidelines as sort of this disaffected group of, of you know, as people like you call us, speed demons, saying that, you know, look, Pay attention to the engineering. Look at the science. Look at the other jurisdictions. Look at what they're doing. And now there seems to be a move toward doing that. And I have no personal monetary gain for this. I, I don't spend my time doing this because I make any money or my job depends on it. I do it because I'm incredibly interested in it, and so do the people that, that I work with. I'm overdue for a break, and we've got one or two people who want to have a word with you on the telephones. De uh, Denise, I'm sorry. Please be patient with us through this. We'll let you have a chat with Ian Toodle after the break on CFAX 1070. 
in conversation this morning with Ian Tootle of Safety Through Education, Not Speed Enforcement. Yes, we're talking traffic once again this morning. Denise, good morning. Oh, hi there. Thanks for taking my call. Um, I'm totally against the the speed limit going up because um, I don't think they've taken into consideration wildlife crossing the highways. And, like, have you ever hit a moose and seen one that does to your vehicle? I, my son was collided with a moose two weeks ago. And mm. it wiped out the side of his truck. Yeah, yeah. Again. Yeah. Lucky, lucky to survive that one. Uh, collision with moose generally ends very, very badly. Yeah, he was, and he was doing a speed limit up there. He's up north, and it was like he was doing 120. And he, he was lucky enough to catch it out of a corner of his eye, and he swerved. Otherwise, yeah. he would have, you know, gone right through the thing. But um, we have a lot of elk up island, too, that cross those highways, and they're, they're really big. And I think that, you know, you can't stop right away. They just come out on the road. Denise, okay. I thank you for weighing in. Appreciate it. Uh, here, here's the thing of it, Mr. Tootle. Uh, and and I, I understand... You know, when when you're on when you're on the Coquihalla Highway and and it's a lonesome road and there's nobody around and you can see forever uh, because there 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 aren't any uh, any uh, forests growing to the to the sides of the road as there are in parts of Vancouver Island where wildlife might wander into your vision at the last split second. Uh, you know, I, I don't care if you do a couple of hundred kilometers an hour. You're, you're probably, you know, relatively safe. But you throw in other traffic. You throw in other conditions. And now it's a different, uh, it's, it's a different animal. Now speeding uh, becomes a part of a continuum of, uh, of uh, hazardous behavior. If, you're, if you want to go faster than the traffic around you, you're going to be tailgating you're going to be making lane changes that uh, may or may not be uh, unsafe you're, you're you're swerving in and out of traffic going around people uh, it's it, it's part of a it's part of a pattern of aggressive driving you you you, you won't accept that Frank, there are four. There are four key areas or areas of focus on this uh, speed survey. One was speed limits. The second was winter tires. Third was slow moving vehicles, and the fourth was wildlife hazards. Um, you know, look, all highways are not going up. There's certain highways, certain sections of highways that have been raised to conform to the 85th percentile. The Coquihalla Highway, for instance, has a world class wildlife fence on it. Um, you know, again, I draw your attention to the report to read it and see the yeah. provisions that are being, uh, you know, uh, placed into this document and are going to be enacted. I think that's the, be- the best uh, recommendation I have for people is really look at it. I know it, it, it requires a bit of reading and a bit of studying, but, um, you know, the one thing I have to point out to a lot of people that call in and say, well, look, I don't want speeds to rise. Speeds are not rising. Speed limits are going up to legitimize the safe practices of the reasonable and safe majority on the roads. And history proves, and other jurisdictions prove, that when this is done, people do not automatically raise their travel speeds. In the past, when limits have gone up, similarly, travel speeds have gone up anywhere from one to three kilometers on the outside. So it's not, uh, this is not going to produce a catastrophe. It's going to tighten up the travel speed. It's going to make speed limits appear more realistic to people, and hopefully the logical outcome of that over time will be that people begin to pay more attention to the signs, which I think you and I can both agree that right now they don't, right? Well, certainly it's presumed that everybody speeds. And and I think th- well, not everywhere, Frank. They do here, and why do they here? Because we've got a, his- a history in British Columbia of of for the last thirty years of making speed limits uh, below the speeds that are considered realistic by the people that are in the best position to make the decision on what the travel speed should be. Uh, let, let, let me bring this up, and Steve, I, I want to be, be patient with me for for another minute here. Uh, your organization, Mister Tootle. By the way, uh, called Sense BC. Sense no BC. Safety. Yep. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, came into existence uh, something in the order of 15, 20 years ago? Not, uh, not, in 1995. Not, not that, that long ago. Okay, 20 yeah. years ago. 
the issue at the time was uh, enforcement of speed limits, whether the speed limits were, were right or wrong. Uh, no, it was the, the issue actually at the time was photo radar. That's right. It was the out, enforcement yeah. of speed limits. Right. Government, uh, well, government actually found a, a method of enforcement that works. And, no, and you guys, oh, of course it does. <laughs> no, it, it doesn't. Of course it does. And it didn't. <laughs> It, it worked just fine, thank you. It was okay. fabulously well, successful. Well, I could argue that one on another day with you, but anyway, go on. Well, my, my, this is fundamental to the discussion. I mean, well, it's not, but you know, we'll get into that another time if you like, but I, I don't mind getting into photo radar now either. It's a complete disaster, and especially a disaster when um, you haven't set the limits properly to begin with. Um, there's somebody, there are, there's Twitter activity now from people that, that receive speed, speeding tickets in places where, or they've had their cars impounded in places where now it would have no longer have been the case that it had been today. I had a friend who received a ticket in Campbell River to, uh, uh, about three days before the announcement was made for doing 13 kilometers an hour over the posted limit. Today, that limit, he would have been doing three kilometers an hour over it. And he maintains right from day one that he wasn't doing anything which was dangerous. And I think that probably now we could agree he wasn't. So maybe, maybe the, the, the law is an ass, but the fact of the matter is that the, the, the law is the law. Photo well, radar was an, an, effective, you... an effective means of, of enforcing it. And you guys couldn't accept that there was going to be effective enforcement out there. Somebody was actually going to hold speeders to account. It's not and an and that, off- that offended you guys. And by the way, back in, at the time, the, the government of the day was overseeing uh, a haul of about 500,000 tickets a year, for which the majority were for speeding. So they had every incentive to go out there and see that that number be doubled. You know, today that number is less than 200,000, and the majority are still for speeding. But the, the number of tickets has been dialed way back, and the, and the focus has been different. I'd I'm, argue I'm, I'm, I'm aware of the uh, photo radar was only a cash cow argument, and that's simply on true because it lost money (laughs) it lost money because of the way it was managed but photo radar in other jurisdictions is abused regularly and you know again it's a long discussion and it but it's one that we spent a lot of time on got to give one or two callers a shot here very quickly steve good morning hi frank um hi and it's steve wallace uh calling hi steve Um, I just want to say that I agree with probably 90% of what Ian is is talking about. And it's not the people that are going, you know, the regular speed limit or the the average speed on a road that are the problems. It's people that are going too slow and people that are going way too fast. And uh, when you're out of kilter, that's where the crashes happen. And this minister seems to have a, a real bent on doing things his way and he's taking a look at the scientists the science behind it and he's going with the experts and the engineers and I sure hope he handles the people that get stacked behind a slow moving vehicle uh, so six or so cars behind a slow moving vehicle on a two lane highway and I sure hope he handles the keep right except to pass sooner than later uh, because I think this guy is the, the only guy since the the minister, Alex Fraser, that we've had has really got the guts to make some decisions. Steve, I thank you for that. i, I got to move on here. Marie, you're going to get the last word quickly. Please, good morning. I agree with Steve Wallace, and I agree with your guest. And I'm sorry, Frank, you're usually right, but in this case, I think that you're not 100% right. It's awful when you see people that are holding up traffic. It causes road rage, which is just as bad as speeding. So, and these people that are diving in and out from lane to lane, um, you know, it's an accident waiting to happen. If you've had somebody tailgating you because there is no other lane to pull to the right, you're worried because you don't want them in your back seat. Anyway, that's all I have to say. I'm really impressed with this guy. Appreciate it, Marie. Thank you for the call. All right. It's, 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 I, I, I suspect it's one of those timeless debates. Mr. Tootle, I will agree on this, that we hope you're right. That we Me too. hope that the highways in British Columbia are safer now than, uh, than ever before. Thanks so much, Frank. We appreciate the talk to talk. To All right, appreciate opportunity it. Opportunity to talk to you. Thank you. I, uh, I am overdue to go to the news to 930. Stay with us on CFAX 1070.